Tucson, Arizona. A beautiful city, rich in culture and stunning vistas, basking in the sunlight. But a new player has entered the game, dominating the city streets. Mattress Room has invaded this once fair city. Hi, my name is Big Adam. I'm not your typical investigative journalist, just a concerned Tucsonan. With the help of my film school dropout nephew, Zachariah Boldro, we're going to get to the bottom of why there's so many mattress rooms in town. It's kind of gloomy today. Take this opportunity to check out some mattress firms. Sightsee a little. There's like 17 mattress firms. There's four right on this corner right here. How is that possible? I wonder if they're just laundering drug money. I mean, no one's ever even in there. Mattresses aren't just something you buy all willy-nilly. They're expensive. How do you feel about all the mattress firms? Uncomfortable. What makes you uncomfortable? They're plotting something. It's probably something with the Illuminati. Keep an eye on us all. They got them one on every corner. They got eyes on every corner. Let's burn them down. Do you think, uh, do you think it'll be alright to shoot in this rain? Oh, it'll clear up. As we enter the store, I devise an impenetrable lie to prevent us from being kicked out. Not too bad. Uh, we're film students. Do you mind if we film in here? Uh, we're just uh, We're just covering some like small businesses, where it's like we're like like sales positions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for what? With a project? Like a student yeah, project? Yeah, it's kind of like a documentary. Okay. Uh, not small business, but yes, if you want. Well, I guess yeah, not small, but it's kind of sales. Do you mind if we record? What's that? Do you mind if we record? Um, sure, yeah, I just want to make sure what it was for first, I guess, but I think, hold on, how did I have that? Let me ask first, because honestly, I don't know if that's even allowed. Our cover was almost blown. I was going to have to use my sweet talking skills to get us out of this one. Because it's not going anywhere, it's just like, it's just for Pima. So it's not going Yeah. Okay, I thought I suppose it's fine, yeah. Uh, you mind asking like, like three questions, I guess? Um, uh, sure, as long as I can, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> how do you stay competitive? How do we stay competitive? Yeah, like with according to like all the other mattress places. Um, so I'd say we stay competitive by we have a low price guarantee, so we kind of we can price match competitors, and just really good service to the two biggest things. Um, damn, this guy puts up a good fight, but enough softball questions. Let's see what happens when I turn up the heat. And how do you feel about Mattress Firm? Um, I really enjoy working here. Um, I've never worked retail before, but I really you know, have had, had a lot of fun. It's uh, slow at times, crazy busy at times, but always uh, an enjoying day, I suppose, for the most part. For the most part, huh? I wonder what he's hiding. Inside the belly of the beast, we conducted a careful investigation of the premises. But I knew that if I were to find out how there were so many stores, I'd have to research it myself. Magic Firm started as a family business and was founded on July 4th, 1986 in Houston, Texas. I don't know about you, but when I think of Houston, I think we have a problem. Just after 30 years, they've become the nation's largest mattress retailer. As of September 2018, they have 3,423 stores in 49 states, employing as much as 10,000 people. How did the company get so big? A man by the name of Steve Stagner joined the company in 2005 and became the CEO from 2010 to 2016, leading the mattress firm through what I like to refer as the Crusade. I discovered that Steve Stagner guided the company's growth from a measly 400 million in sales to over 3.5 billion in 2015. 
through a series of acquisitions of other mattress retailers nationwide. From sea to shining sea, the company would spread its real estate like the bubonic plague. So I looked up one of the founders here, Harry Roberts. Uh, a criminal! In 2007, they acquired Mattress Pro. In 2014, they acquired Mattress Barn. The same year, they conquered Sleep Train, which proved to be their largest and most valuable acquisition, which increased their size and empire by 20%. January 6, 2014, Sleep America sells all assets and operations to Mattress Firm for $12.5 million. Acquiring 47 former Sleep America stores in Arizona. After they're already at 84. But that wasn't enough. They went on an acquisition spree that year, Mattress. buying out seven other companies, including 12 retail brands, and 671 stores across America. Mattress. 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 Steve Static. Bedmark. Betting experts. Back to bed. Mattress. All smothered under the fabric mattress. and crushed mattress. by the springs of Mattress Firm's tearing off. How could we let this happen? I couldn't solve this alone. After my manic episode, I knew that to further my research, I would need assistance. So I sought out the help of acclaimed Civil War historian and mattress enthusiast, Matthew R. Esman, to get some insight in the company's actions. All right, can you explain to me the logic of having a store on every corner in Tucson? Well, you see, furniture and department stores used to be the only places to buy mattresses. But manufacturers wanted to encourage people to buy new mattresses more frequently, so mattress stores have been spreading like wildfire since the 90s. Mattresses are a high margin product, so they don't need to sell that many to break even. They also don't have to hire that many employees per store. It's a cheap business with high returns. The stores also double as advertisement. This is important for a product that most people don't consider until it's necessary. Okay, but what about online retailers? Kids these days are always buying things online, right? Well, sort of. This idea of bed in a box has become the latest trend. Online competitors such as Casper and Tuft and Needle account for a tiny but growing share of the overall market. About 4.6% in 2016, up from the 1.8% in 2015. But these mattress firms still carry a wider selection. You can test the mattress in store, and people are still willing to make the trip to talk to a human being. Yes, hello? Okay, thanks. Mattress firm has gone bankrupt. So yes, so so right here. It appears I was wrong, my friend. On October 5th, 2018, Mattress Firm files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection due to declining sales after what Adam calls the Crusades. This strategy of overexpansion proved to be too much too fast. On top of that, more and more people are buying online. And to make matters worse, Steinhoft International, the multi-billion dollar retailer that acquired Mattress Firm in 2016, has been entangled in an accounting scandal, destroying its stock price. But this isn't the end of our beloved mattress firm. In this case, they are using bankruptcy to reorganize the company and get out of unwanted leases in underselling areas. They will be closing 700 of their 3,200 stores as of now, including several Tucson locations. So there you have it. The case of the abundance of mattress firms has been closed. What will become of the company? What will happen to the employees? The empty buildings? Steve Stagner? Doesn't matter. Get those stores out of here. Matters for him, hmm? So I'm calling you from beyond the sea, from behind the mountains. Come to me. Come to see my land.